Hey guys, Joe Pye here at Advanced Innovations. Welcome back to the shop. Thanks for coming back. I'm going to show you a technique today that I learned a very long time ago, and it was an aha moment for me. Very much like when you're working on a car and you struggle through something for hours trying to overcome a certain obstacle, and then you find out that they make a tool for that that would have uh, probably cut the job time down considerably and saved you a lot of patience and swearing. Today I'm going to show you how to drill a small hole on the lathe with a very small drill. And one of the reasons that we break drills and we break taps is because we lose the feel for the interaction between that tool and the material that we're cutting. Now that particular term, the feel, comes from a friend of mine, Chet. So if Chet, you're watching, buddy, this was uh, inspired by you. He used to tell me about the feel. The man said, you got to have the feel a thousand times. And until you realize exactly what that means, it's just going to be another term. But as you turn a twist drill on a lathe or you pull a, a handle on a mill, if you can feel the material moving against the cutting tool, then you're ahead of the game because you know when something's going wrong, you know when something's going right, you've got that feel. And that's not really something you can teach someone. You just have to have that in you and you have to say, yeah, I can feel it. I know when that drill's getting sharp or when it's cutting good or not. Well, when it comes to exceptionally small tools like small taps, 080 taps, or even smaller than that, or little drills, one millimeter or smaller, you lose that feel with that tool because of the leverage, because of the torque, because of the attachments, because of just the sheer mass of the machine, it's just consumed and there really is no feedback until it's too late, then you know it's too late because it broke off and that kind of feedback comes through pretty quick. Anyway, they do make specific attachments for doing what I'm about to show you. But when I look them up on the book, the, the cheap ones are around $400 and the expensive ones are around $900. So if you have a really expensive little hole or a very profitable part and you feel like spending $900 or $700 to drill one hole, then have at it. But I chose not to do that. And I came up with an idea to modify an existing drill chuck that I have to see if I could make it happen and it worked like a charm. So I'm going to share that with you today. I'm going to walk out to the uh, bench. I'm going to grab a small drill. I'm not going to tell you how small until we get there. And we're going to punch it through some material. And I'm also not going to share that with you until we get out there. So let's take a walk out to the lathe. Look at a small drill. Look at how that drill is going to be uh, presented and utilized. And I think you're going to like what you see. Okay, guys, this is the drill that I'm going to use for today's demonstration. And just to put it in perspective, uh, we're going to push this into a piece of stainless steel because that's about the worst material you can think of for a small wire drill. I mean, you could get into a exotic Hasselloy or Inconel or one of those Monel type nightmares. But just for sake of this demonstration, let's push this into a piece of stainless steel. And to give you an idea how big that is, this is a chunk of half inch diameter stainless steel. And it continues to roll away because this is all macro right now. Let's pull back and give you some idea what we're looking at. Alright, half inch diameter stainless steel. This drill bit is 26 thousandths of an inch in diameter. I mean you could poke yourself in the finger with this and you'd think you had a splinter. This is really small and if I wanted to I could just snap it off like a, like a piece of glass. It's very flexible even though it's so small. I'm going to show you the chuck I'm going to use to push this in. There's nothing fancy about it, but I did make an adapter for it. This is a little Jacob's chuck. Straight chank. And I'm going to put this in another chuck so that I can close the jaws down to the point where I can actually hold this drill. Not all chucks will close all the way to nothing. I believe this one will go down to 15th hour, 164th. So let's set this up in the tailstock. And there's still a trick about to happen here, so I made an adapter for this guy that's going to make this job a whole lot easier. And it works very well. So let's take a look. Let me shift the camera around and see if I can get close enough to actually show you what's going on. Okay, I have an exceptionally small center drill in my Jacob's Chuck right now. I'm going to pop a center drill in that hole. Actually, I'm just going to make a small dent. It doesn't even have to be a center drill, just something to track center because the small drills are so flexible that if they're not even located, they will walk all over the place. All 
right, that is exceptionally small, but that's all it's going to take. Let's back it up and look at the actual setup and uh, show you the trick. Now I can be fairly sure that it's no great surprise to see somebody put a chuck in a chuck. It's not unusual. Standard tail stock, there's an awful lot of mass here. If you think you're going to feel that 26,000th diameter drill, you've got another thing coming. You may feel it, but you're not going to feel it like this particular adapter will allow you to feel it. Instead of putting your chuck directly into your other chuck, and you have a straight shank, put an adapter in your chuck. put your smaller chuck in that adapter. We are now eliminating the lead screw, the mast, the spindle, and we're going to move out here and we're going to actually push this by hand. This becomes your feed mechanism right here. And the feedback that you'll get from the drill that's going to be in here against the material is absolutely amazing. Let me put the drill in here. We'll get this thing repositioned and push it into that stainless like it's nothing. It is very important to use clean fluid because you don't want any chips building up in front of the drill. These drills are so small and the chips are so small that it'll be very hard to tell if the drill is dull or there's chips in the bottom of your hole. All right, let's see how long it takes to go in about 200,000. Okay, that is real time, and you can see the difference between the projection here. That's about a solid three quarters of an inch. The drill is flush with the face of the part. And that is just under a half. I would say that's a solid quarter of an inch worth of depth. That was real time. I did not use the crank on the tailstock. I drove that in by hand. If the drill were to start to grab, you could actually let it go and let it spin with the material and back it out with the helix of the flute to reduce, uh, reduce the risk of snapping it off. That's it. That's all I got. This is a very effective trick. This is also called the micro uh, drill chuck adapter. You can buy these if you want to spend a hundred and a half and then put a chuck on it for whatever else that's going to cost you or do this. This is good for the lathe. This will not work in the mill because naturally in the mill, the adapter is going to spin and without a driver to drive the chuck, you're pretty much out of luck. So not to say you couldn't rig it up. I'm sure you can, but this is a very effective lathe setup and it will give you tremendous confidence with small drills. Okay guys, as promised, here's your close up. The drill survived. Nice hole. This will serve you well. It has served me well, and it's a great confidence uh, setup if you don't feel like snapping off a drill in a part. Good luck. All right, guys. Well, I told you that was going to be something to see, right? If anyone would ever tell you that they could push a twist drill into a piece of stainless by hand without using the tailstock, you would think that they were crazy. 
but in fact the feedback that you get from that particular setup is amazing and you will probably never break another small drill ever again. Now I may have overestimated the price of these things when I said seven to $900. You can get a, a name brand complete unit, $699, $700, but they do make them somewhere in the $150, $200 range if you look. That's called a micro drill chuck adapter. It's spring-loaded. I used to call it a floating chuck or a spring-loaded chuck, but the technical term is a micro drill chuck adapter. It does have a two-piece, three-piece uh, spring-loaded spindle on it, so you can put it in a bridge port or a mill, and you can float it in as well. It has a ball-bearing uh, race-type collar just behind the chuck so that the chuck will spin, but the collar doesn't, and you can feed it by hand as well. You don't need to use the handle on the mill. It's a fantastic tool to have, and if you're the only guy in the shop that has one, don't loan it out, rent it out, and you'll make a fortune. You can retire early. Anyway, I hope you liked what you saw. It works really well. Try it if you have a straight shank chuck laying around, a small straight shank chuck laying around. Make a sleeve for it, stick it in a regular chuck, have at it. You'd probably be uh, glad you did. Anyway, that's it. Joe Pye, Advanced Innovations, Austin, Texas. I'm out.